is exactly what I've used to coach over a hundred students and professionals across different age ranges and stages in their careers from engineering to tech to finance to banking to consulting you name it storytelling and connecting with people emotionally and leaning into what makes you unique. This is going to be one of my best tips and this is my four point framework for compelling anyone. This is my four point strategy that I use to actually seal the interview in the first two minutes. Was able to go from getting rejected from a job to getting that overturned and actually getting the offer. Yo, yo, yo. What's going on? It's your boy Malik, AKA The Black Lotus, and today I'm back at it again with another video. This is another submission that I got in, so thank you to all of you who have been submitting questions. Um, since I don't have the capacity to get on the phone with everyone and do one-on-one -on -one coaching like I used to, I'm gonna be making these videos so that as many people can benefit from it as possible. Today's video is gonna be focused on career. Yay. <laughs> and we're gonna be talking about specifically what do you do when you're having trouble cold applying for jobs, okay? And so before we actually get into the content of what do you do when you're having trouble cold applying, let me qualify myself to talk to you about why this advice that I'm actually about to give is actionable, it's valid, and it's, it's legit. Um, this framework that I'm about to present to you guys is the exact same framework that I've used personally to go from getting rejected from hundreds of jobs and applying for a year and a half straight and not getting any looks to then those same companies that rejected me are now competing and trying to negotiate offers to get me into their companies. I've used the same framework and mentality to go from actually going through an interview circuit for two months and then at the end of it getting rejected for the job but three weeks later because of um, my pitch because of the story that I told because of how I presented myself as a candidate was able to go from getting rejected from a job to getting that overturned and actually getting the offer okay this framework is exactly what I've used to coach over a hundred students and professionals across different age ranges and stages in their career from applying for, for grad school, uh, getting internships, getting job offers, and I've seen this work across multiple industries and sectors from engineering to tech to finance to banking to consulting, you name it. So this stuff is legit because at the end of the day, it, it gets down to storytelling and connecting with people emotionally and leaning into what makes you unique, okay? So, let's get into today's content. What do you do when you're having trouble cold applying? Like, let's say you're looking for a new opportunity, you're trying all the traditional methods, but they're just not working for you. What do you do to actually distinguish yourself? Well, when I started to think about that question, I said, hmm, okay. The question is really getting at it's not that you're having trouble cold applying, it's that you're having trouble standing out from all of the other applications. So the real problem that we're trying to solve here is how do you actually stand out from other applicants when you're navigating your job search? And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. The first thing is to be hyper-focused. This is one of my core tenets. Like I used to be um, of the perspective of taking like a shotgun approach and just like seeing whatever comes, but I, I don't do that anymore. Everything that I do is hyper-focused, hyper-personalized. And if you think about it, it actually makes sense. Like from a technology and product standpoint, everything is about personalizing the experience to you from like the ranking algorithm to the greetings that you see in the certain product where they're like, hi Malik, welcome back. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh wow, thank you for noticing me. <laughs> Um, everything is about personalization and tailoring uh, your, your, your messaging, okay? So I would challenge you to not just apply to every single company in the industry that is relevant for you. Like, oh, you're saying, okay, I wanna be an investment banker, I'm gonna apply to every single bank under the sun and whoever takes me, that's who I'm going with. I, I think that that's doing yourself a disservice um, and you're not getting the most bang for your buck. 
okay? Because at the end of the day, the more tailored you are with your approach, the more tailored you are with your research and your study and your communication and your knowledge of that exact company, the more likely that that company is gonna see that, connect with it and realize that this is a serious applicant who is the right person for us, okay? So the more tailored, the more focused you are, the better your search will be, the more effective your search will be, the better your communication, the better your pitch will be, because it won't just be focused on generalities, it'll be focused on this specific company with this specific vision and mission statement, with these specific projects coming up the pipeline, with these specific areas of interest that I wanna work in, with these specific people who work at the company that I wanna collaborate with. The more focused you can be, the better. So don't take a shotgun approach, narrow your list down to your top three to five companies, no more than five, and really, really, really get to know the company. Get to know their values, read their blogs, read their case studies, read their mission statement, read their entire website, every word, read it. Yes, I said that and I meant it. This is my approach, I get into the details, and that's what makes the difference at the end of the day. So get to know who they are, get to know what they stand for, get to know how they talk about themselves, and then the when you get to know that, you actually allow yourself to use the same language that they're using. Because if you think about it from, how do people assimilate into a tribe? Okay, That happens through language. Using the same language, culture, and customs shows that, hey, we are a part of the same whole. And so when you can actually take a tailored approach to your applications, you now are signaling to your recruiter that, hey, like I'm already a part of this tribe, and I'm the long lost tribe member that you guys have been looking for, so come on, let's let's get this thing, let's get this show on the road, and let's work together, let's make some impact, okay? Be hyper-focused. Um, and learn everything that you can possibly learn about the company through the people and every single marketing channel, YouTube interview, podcast interview, glass door review, um, you know, people commenting in a random forum that is obscure on the third page of Google that nobody saw. Like every single channel related to this thing, I want you to go so deep in it that you know the ins and outs of how people are talking about the company, the interview experience, the leadership, their perspective, what's on the horizons, their biggest challenges, everything. Be focused, okay? That's tip number one. Tip number two is, this is going to be one of my best tips. This is my four point strategy that I use to actually seal the interview in the first two minutes. That's how legit this is, okay? Because it gets at putting yourself in the shoes of the hiring manager, of the recruiter, the interviewer. What are they actually looking for? Like, why are they actually like hiring someone? What do they want, okay? And this is where the job description is gonna be your holy grail. It's gonna be your Bible, right? Like, you want to get so familiar with the job description because they spend a lot of time crafting that to let you know exactly the kind of person they're looking for, exactly the qualities they want, exactly the experience they want. And so I go through that job description and I tear it apart. I annotate it like this was, you know, AP Lang in 11th grade and, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I get these grades right, okay? So I tear up the job description. I go point by point. When they say they want strong communication and leadership skills, I go back to my resume, I see what experiences do I have that ladder up to that? And then I prepare my talking points accordingly. And I do the same for every single thing that they say that they want or they say that they stand for in the job description and I show a clear through line to my experiences and the value that I bring to the table, okay? Job description is your holy grail. And so what are they actually looking for? They want somebody who cares about the company, who's the, who's the right fit for the company. They want somebody who, who, who will blend into the culture and who will add value, who's one of them, okay? They want somebody who is passionate. They want somebody who is hardworking. They want somebody who is capable. They're hiring you to do a job. They wanna know that you can do the job really well and that you're the right person for this company and then that you're a pleasant person to be around and work with. That's all they wanna know. And so what I do is I, I use these four points um, to ground myself in any pitch. I ask myself this, number one, why do I want to work in this industry or space? If it's tech, if it's nonprofits, what is it about this sector that drew you to it? For me, it's that as an entrepreneur, I was able to serendipitously start a business and scale it to six figures in 20 countries, all through being technologically competent. I built an entire fashion e-commerce business without even knowing how to design or how to draw, 
right? But because I could use Photoshop, because I could use Alibaba, because I could use, um, at the time, it was big cartel websites, because I understood, you know, the, that how to leverage all these different off the off the shelf softwares together to create something, I was able to build a business. And I was like, oh my God, this is the most powerful thing on earth because I was able to create an impact and get one of my most valuable informative experiences all through technology. And so that's what excites me about that. So having a personal story about why you wanna work in this space or having a clear charter for why you wanna work in this space is key. The next question you need to be able to answer them, uh, answer for them is why do you want to work at this company? That's huge because at the end of the day, like if you are applying to Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, Barclays, you can say the same thing to all of them, right? Because they're all investment banks, but each bank has a little something different. It, it may be very subtle. It may be hard to discern to the untrained eye, but each bank has a special sauce about them and each company within an industry is the same way. So your job is to actually get to know the company, get to know their values and figure out why you want to work there. When I think about um, how I leverage this for Facebook, um, I knew that Facebook was one of the companies that I wanted to work for fresh out of college because um, I actually grew so much through using the Facebook platform. Facebook allowed me to go from someone who was outcasted, who was bullied, who was struggling to find their voice to actually finding a community of like-minded people and connecting with them. People who are interested in art and creativity and fashion and photography, but also interested in personal growth. And finding this tribe of people who shared my same values catapulted my personal development. From the professional side, Facebook was also instrumental for me in my journey because I built my entire first business on Facebook. I know I not only built a brand on Facebook, in Facebook groups, um, and in Facebook communities, but I built my entire first business through um, organic content marketing in Facebook groups. So everything that I learned about product, about entrepreneurship, about customer service, about creative, about marketing, about what's actually potential, what's actually possible with the potential of these platforms, that all happened through Facebook. And so it, it's only fitting that I go to Facebook to actually learn how to now build products and market them at scale. That's a compelling story. So know exactly why you want to work for this specific company. And if you can't find a personal story or reason to make sense of all that, then that lets you know that maybe you don't really want to work for that company. Maybe your reasons aren't strong enough. Maybe you don't really know what you want. And maybe this is time for you to do some extra reflection on your personal values, where you are in your career, and what you need to get to the next level in order to make that argument in a way that is true to you and compelling to them, okay? Um, number three is why do you want this role, okay? So yeah, I could work, like I could do a number of things at Facebook and this is a topic for another video, all the different opportunities that are available in tech, okay? I could be working on the legal team, I could be an engineer, I could be a marketer, I could be a designer, I can be on the sales team working with ads, I can be a creative director, the list goes on. But what is it about this specific role and the day-to-day -day responsibilities that you connect with, that are meaningful to you, that are exciting to you, okay? So getting specific about like, hey, I know that in this role, I'm gonna be doing X, Y, and Z, and I'm like, dude, I'm super pumped about that because in my last few roles, I was focused on Z, Y, X, and you wanna draw a clear through line to show that like, the experiences that I had in the past effectively prepared me for uh, contributing impact in this new role that I'm seeking, and in fact, this role is the right fit for me and I have everything um, I have everything going for me so that I can crush it, okay? Um, and then number four is gonna be why you? And this is where you get your unique special sauce, right? So in, in, in this point, you want to clearly articulate to them what is unique about you that makes you a standout candidate from everyone else. And it doesn't always have to be something that is super complicated or super technical. I know for me, one of the things that I know makes me very unique is that one, I'm an energy source for people when I walk in the room. Like any room that I enter, I come with positivity, I come with enthusiasm, I come with a desire to learn, to serve, to help, to contribute, and I raise the energy levels in the room when I get in there. And that is a powerful 
That is a powerful quality that you can have as a product manager, as a leader, etc. And so I know that that's one of my strengths. So that's something that I lean into that everybody can't speak to. I know that I have this insane work ethic, scrappiness, entrepreneurship type mindset that I just I just have to get in on the ground floor and get my hands dirty and make an impact. Like I can't stop myself from trying to actually produce. I love that, right? And so that grittiness and that passion and determination, that makes me unique from everyone else. And then I have experiences that I can actually point to to justify these qualities and show them in action and the impact that they actually have potential to have, okay? So those four points are number one, why do you want to work in this space? Number two, why do you want to work in this specific company? Number three, why do you want to work with this specific role? And then number four, why are you the best person? What makes you unique? What's your special sauce? If you answer these first four questions, if you just answer those first four questions, and that's all you do for your interview prep, you'll be more than ready when you go into your interviews. You'll be more than ready. Because this is all that the hiring manager, the recruiter, the interviewer really needs to know about you. Everything else that they're doing in the interview is to validate um, these four points. They wanna validate how good your experience really is by giving you case studies that puts you in unfamiliar problem spaces with a little bit of tension to see if your reasoning, uh, communication, and like impact driving skills are really on par, okay? Um, and so when you understand that, that's really powerful. And if you actually zoom out, this is a cover letter. Why the company, why the space, why the role, why me? That's a four paragraph cover letter. If you zoom out again, this is the answer to the first question in the interview. So, tell me about yourself. Or so, how'd you get here? Tell me a little bit about what you've done in the past, right? You know, when they ask you that first question, these are the four things that they're trying to gauge. And so I'm very intentional in the first step of the interview. I hit all of those points. And the thing is, you don't wanna to go too much in depth and like start going on a tangent. This should only take one to two minutes, but you wanna hit all of those points like you're kind of laying out the structure for an outline. And so that you lay out all the, the structure for the outlines and then you give the interviewer some bait to click into some stuff. So when I mention my entrepreneurial experience and building an actual business, that's bait that the interviewer is gonna to wanna to click into to actually gauge my product sense and my abilities as an entrepreneur. And so now that allows me to guide the conversation towards my PowerPoints, towards the things that make me strong so that I can show them why I'm so unique, why I wanna work at this company, all the unique value that I give, etc. That four point framework is your best friend. If there's anything that you need to know about your job interviewing, um, your job search or interviewing, it's literally these four questions. You do that, you will be good, trust me. And then when you go out and you network with people or you pitch people or you get to meet people, you have you have your talking points down pat. It allows you to be more confident, feel more, re more relaxed, and allows you to really let the other aspects of your personality shine as well. Okay, so now let's get into number three. Are y'all still with me? Can I hear it? Yeah! Okay, good, good, good. All right, so um, number three is showing that you care and that you're ready to do what it takes. I'm someone who believes in the power of passion and in determination. And if you are a successful person, if you are a leader, you recognize passion, grit, determination, and hustle in others, and you know, because you know how valuable that is. Like any successful person knows the value of hustle, passion, determination, because at a certain point in life or in your career or in your job, there's gonna be a point where you just kind of have to force yourself to do what it takes. You're gonna be met with a challenge that you weren't prepared for, that's gonna take longer than expected, that's gonna require a lot of coordination and, and all this kind of stuff. And the person who's really ready to dig it out, who's ready to jump on a call at 12 a.m. or at 5 a.m., which I've had to do in the last six months, that resonates with people. So I always try to show people how bad I want it. Like if I'm applying for Facebook, I wanna show Facebook that I bleed blue, that I bleed blue, this is a part of my DNA and I'm willing to do whatever, whatever it takes. So how can you show that in your application process. A couple things. So I love adding bonus unsolicited materials to my applications. So some examples of that are one, make a video. This is the social media content era. Video speak more than text. 
nobody likes reading, everybody watches YouTube and Instagram, okay? And now TikTok. So make a video with a 30 second, one minute pitch on yourself, your experiences, or answering those four questions that we just talked about in the four point strategy. Make a video talking through all those key points, and then maybe pay somebody on Upwork, or maybe pay a creative that you know from college or in your network to spruce up the video, you know, or maybe do it yourself. That's not mandatory. You don't have to do that for it to work. Just the fact that you're doing a video is enough for people to be compelled and inspired and want to meet you, right? Because that's not something people do. Why? Because people don't care that much. Why? Because they're spreading their effort across so many different companies. They don't have the time to show how much they care for this one company. So showing that you really mean it is, is important. So videos are a great way to, to pitch yourself, to give some additional context, to show the value that you have and to let them meet you and engage with you, right? And there's software that you can actually use to show how many times people open or download your videos. I know Grant Cardone in the sales world, he used the same thing. When he was actually trying to win uh, a very competitive competitive real estate deal um, where there were multiple buyers but he had to prove why he was the best buyer. He made a video and they downloaded the video like 15 times and they replayed it so many different times and the entire sales team loved it. And we're talking about like, like seven, eight figure real estate deals, okay? And this same tactic was able to drive results. Um, and I've seen it work in the career space as well. And if you actually go on YouTube, you'll see a bunch of people who made these types of uh, videos for like, you know, Google interviews or whatever. Um, and you'll see examples that you can actually reference. So a few, 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 few people would do it, um, but it's so few and far between that it's really impactful when somebody does something like this. The next thing is having a, a brief slide deck or PowerPoint presentation about yourself or having a one slider. Like if you can't make a whole presentation, make one slide that is just like, hey, this is me on a page, right? Like, hey, here are my experiences. Here are some of my unique accomplishments. Here's a nice, great picture of me smiling and, and you know, looking excited for my first day on the job, wink. <laughs> um, and then you put down some of your key qualifications. You put down some of your past experience. Uh, you show why you are a great addition to the team and why they need you. Make a PowerPoint, a Google Slides, go in Canva. Canva has a lot of really beautiful templates um, already laid out, very visual, very unique. Um, if you wanna stand out from a visual standpoint, leverage those resources and create a presentation. I love doing that. That's something that I actually did with my Facebook and my Twitter interviews um, in the past. So what I did, and this was so unique, and, I, and, I, and I'm so glad that I did this, um, was that when Facebook was actually coming to recruit for product marketing in DC in the fall of 2017, I had already been preparing for product marketing interviews for like the past three months. So I spent so much time listening to podcasts, learning about the company, before interviews even opened up, before I even knew what the cycle was. I was just getting ready, right? Stay ready so you don't gotta get ready. Then all of a sudden a great friend of mine, Azia Hobson, shout out to her, um, she was leading the information systems like Emerging Coders, Emerging Leaders Academy, um, and they did a partnership to recruit for the very specific job that I wanted. And so how could I stand out in an event with several different interns, potential interns, potential full-time employees? What I did was I'm like, okay, well I'm really good at graphic design and just design as a whole. So I went into Photoshop and then I created a mock-up of like the Facebook current, the current Facebook web experience at the time, and then I subbed out some of the components. So instead of my status post, I used my status post to actually put my cover letter in status post format. Instead of like the metadata that talks about where you live, where you're from, and where you worked, I had a, a couple bullet points on like the previous experience that I had. So, oh, Morgan Stanley this, or entrepreneurship that, or whatever the case is. And then I included some pictures as well. Um, and the whole thing basically felt like a Facebook cover letter designed to look like a contextual, like it's like if I created a cover letter as a status post and like use that, that's what it actually looked like. And so I printed that out on nice paper. Um, after I added value in the conversation, I was very present in the discussion. I showed that to the recruiter at the time and boom, showing her that on top of my resume and showing that I was clearly qualified for the job is what got her to be an ally for me and to actually be my guiding light who helped me get this job and I can't thank her enough for doing that. But she wouldn't have taken that interest in me if she didn't see me come correct with this unique Facebook mock-up. It wasn't a presentation, but it was a graphic um, that showed 
why I would be such a great addition to the team. Okay. And so these are unique things that you can do to differentiate yourself. Right. And I was the only person from that event who actually got an interview and the only person who ended up getting a job and one out of seven people who actually um, were admitted into the program. Okay. Um, and I firmly believe that the reason why I was able to even advance in the process was because I gained that advocate early on by showing that I cared so much more than anyone else who was there. Do that. Um, the next thing is coming up with a pitch. Um, so this is where you can get creative. Like if you're in, um, if you're going for like a consulting role or maybe like a creative agency role or whatever the case is, like think about how can you improve the business? What recommendations can you give? Like what is your unique perspective on this business? If you're applying for an agency job, pitch them a project, you know, show them a case study of like, you know, something that you've worked on in the past or show them how you would think about, um, and, building out new features for the platform, like whatever the job requirements that they have listed are, go through those and say, hmm, how can I create a dummy project that shows that I can actually deliver impact for some of those points they're looking for in the actual job description? And then you send that out as like a pitch or supplementary, supplementary material. And the way you do it is you just make it like really chill, right? You finish your interview, you, you're talking to the people or whatever, and just like, hey, these are some ideas that I had when I was thinking about ways that I can make an impact fresh out the gate or different things that I thought would be interesting to double click into with your company. I would love to share those with those, share those with you and get your feedback and really have a dialogue about it um, to figure out, you know, to show you how I'm thinking about things and also figure out where are my blind spots and how can I better prepare myself to have an impact at a place like this? Because I know that this is the place that I wanna work at and there's no place that I'd rather be. Boom. You feel me? That person is going to want to engage. They're going to want to see what you're talking about. They're because they I mean, if they're interviewing, they're probably, you know, more passionate than most about their job. They may not be super passionate. They may just be doing it for performance points. But, you know, they care about this job. And so they want people who are going to do well and thrive. And so you're just giving them firepower when they go into calibrations or interview def debriefing to be like, yo, this is the person that we need. Okay. Um, and then the final tip is just, this is the basics, but just basic resume hygiene. Just design your resume so that if somebody skims it in the six seconds that they're gonna spend on it, um, they can just get the few, the key points, like have certain key accomplishments where you have like numbers or specific impact that's like really notable. Bold that, right? Leverage italics, bolding, and like typography hierarchy to your advantage. Make it, take advantage of like the spatial real estate of your resume as a whole. That's gonna help out a lot. So just brush your teeth, bro, brush your teeth. All this other stuff are ways that you can ice out your grill, <laughs> but the resume and stuff, that's brushing your teeth, okay? Um, and then the final tip, um, and then I got a bonus one after this. The final tip is gonna be, be unrelenting. Be unrelenting. Grant Cardone, Uncle G, he says, be obsessed or be average. And I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that. Once you, and if you're not hyper-focused, going back to tip number one, it's very difficult to be unrelenting. Because if, I, if I'm saying I'm gonna apply to every investment bank under the sun or every tech company under the sun, that's one thing. If I say I'm only focused on Google and Facebook, and all of my energy is gonna be so, 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 so focused on that. That means that now my follow-up game can go crazy because I'm going to be messaging every single recruiter at this company. I'm going to be messaging every single person at this company. They will know me by name, for sure. There's no, there's no chance that I won't be doing that. I'm gonna be messaging every person on this company. I'm gonna be trying to figure out how can I get in front of everyone. I will be following up every week, every day if I could. If I could follow up every day and, and not get blocked on the email services or whatever, I would do that, okay? If I could somehow get somebody's phone, phone number, I will call them. If I can get on an informational interview, like whatever entry point that I can get into this company so that people can know my face, know my name, know what I want to do there, I, I you have to take advantage of that. So pe be prepared to do everything humanly possible. Like every day after you do these basics of like you get your story down, you have your resume hygiene, you have your short list of companies that you focused on, the only variable between you and getting the job then is the amount of action that you take every day. And I think a great example of this is again, Grant Cardone. Um, if you talk about how he courted his, his wife, Elena, who was like a supermodel actress at the time, and he was a successful business person. And so, you know, he had some status to him, but she was completely uninterested at first glance 
and didn't want to have anything to do with him despite all the material success that he'd had. Just due to his personality and character traits or whatever, she was just like totally turned off. And I think this is a great example because I look at the process of finding the right company for you as a courtship process between you and the company, right? It is a value exchange, it is a courtship, it is a partnership that you're entering into. And so I think there's a lot of clear lessons that we can learn from um, what it means to stay in the sale from Grant Cardone in this case. And so what he actually did um, was that he called his wife, his, his soon to be wife, at that point she was just a random lady, twice a month, every single month for 13 months, just to get a date. Come on, if you wanna talk about following up, all my salespeople, they know about the value of the follow. -up. And that just goes to show you the attitude that you have to have when it comes to following up. And, and the thing that was unique about it is that although he was so persistent for such a long period of time, he didn't waver at all, even though it was taking a while, right? He, his confidence didn't waver, his enthusiasm didn't waver. He kept showing up like it was day one. And Les Brown, he has a similar story to this when he was trying to get a job as a disc jockey. You know, he kept showing up with a smile on his face, ready for action, just as excited as he was the first day when he heard no. And that's the energy that we have to bring to our follow up. And I think that if you bring that type of passionate spirit, something's gonna give eventually. Something's gonna give, either this opportunity's gonna give, or you'll get valuable feedback through going through the process that'll prepare you for your next opportunity. So that is tip number four, be unrelenting. And the bonus tip is leverage referrals when you can. I mean, I'm sure we all know this, but anytime you have somebody on the inside who can who can pass your resume along, that, that always helps. And I think that that kind of goes to the general strategy of making sure that they, they you hit them from all corners, right? You get the referral, you apply to the general strategy, you reach out to people who you think can be on the team, you reach out to other XFN, you try to figure out how many touch points can you connect with and how many different ways can you try to find an entry point into the system um, that'll work for you. So that about does it. Those are my tips. Number one, be hyper-focused and tailored. Number two, put yourself in their shoes. Leverage your four-point framework of answering why this space, why this company, why this role, why you. Um, and then number three is gonna be showing how much you care and how bad you want it. And you can do this with bonus goodies like videos, PowerPoints, pitches, graphics, and of course, you gotta take care of your basic resume hygiene. And then number four is be unrelenting. And this is probably the most essential one to make all of the pieces in this actually work for you. You have to have that unrelenting type of spirit. So channel your inner Grant Cardone and don't stop until you secure the back. All right, that's it. That's my message for today. To all my Power Rangers out there as usual, own your power, give back, Leave no stone unturned. Black Lotus.